Offers 24-hour fountain service, vending and cooler equipment to restaurants, business offices, and balls. Khalil's brands include soft drinks, waters, teas, sports, lifestyle, and energy drinks. KhalilBottling.com Next time on the Vietnam War, casualties mount as U.S. Marines dig in at Con Tien. We were being called the Alamo. You know, hey, we knew what the Alamo was. And the Battle of Doc To takes a staggering toll when the Vietnam War continues. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Held Thursday, October 19th at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring award-winning co-anchors and co-managing editors of the PBS NewsHour, Judy Woodruff, and the late Gwen Eiffel. To learn more or to purchase tickets, call 602-496-0482 or visit cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Your favorite PBS shows, ready to watch when you are, anytime, any place. Find more ways to explore than ever before. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from I'm David Goldstein, owner of Biltmore Loan and Jewelry. We buy or loan on upscale assets. We have over 30 years of experience in determining values of automobiles, jewelry, art, collectibles, and antiques. For more information and appointments, BiltmoreLoan.com. Hospice of the Valley, medical, social, and spiritual care for patients nearing end of life and support for their families. A not-for-profit community hospice, HOB.org. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. That trade relationship, uh, properly viewed, has been very valuable to the United States. Former Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano sounds off on the future of NAFTA. Plus, the latest on the recovery efforts in Mexico after the 7.1 magnitude earthquake hit on Tuesday. And after almost 75 years, some Arizona pilots finally got some closure. Where these World War II era pilots went and what they saw tonight. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Blakely McHugh. And I'm Lysander Marquez. Thank you for joining us. Arizona shipped $8.3 billion in exports to Mexico last year and another $2 billion to Canada. Supporters say that's one benefit of the North American Free Trade Agreement. At a forum in Washington today, experts, including former Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano, looked at what could happen if NAFTA is renegotiated. Cronkite News reporter Trevor Fay in our Washington bureau was there. Former Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano has concerns about the current negotiations on the North American Free Trade Agreement, but she has bigger concerns about those negotiations falling apart. There is an urgency to this topic, uh, given troubling comments from the current administration about terminating NAFTA altogether. President Donald Trump has threatened to throw out the free trade deal between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico if a new deal is not negotiated. But panelists at an event here today all agreed that negotiation can and must work out for the three nations. We see huge opportunities in the renegotiation of the NAFTA, and uh, in those opportunities, the possibility that we will be able to evolve a North American uh, trade and economic partnership uh, that is truly reflective of the uh, 21st century. Duqueno says he and his countrymen have high hopes for the renegotiated deal and said the ultimate goal of NAFTA should be allowing all three nations to compete better in the global marketplace. Former Mexican ambassador to the U.S. Arturo Shakurin agreed that negotiation is the best option, but he is more skeptical about the avenue to get there. I do believe that you never let a good crisis go to waste. And uh, the crises that was 
opened by Trump throwing the TPP out the window, which would have modernized and upgraded NAFTA through the back door without actually having to open Pandora's box and renegotiate NAFTA. Napolitano stressed that NAFTA has been very valuable to the U.S., and she said the alternative is not an attractive one. Um, the growth in trade has meant growth in jobs in the United States during dependency of NAFTA. So. Uh, to, to lose NAFTA would be to lose, you know, that economic benefit. In Washington, Trevor Fay, Cronkite News. Arizona Superintendent Diane Douglas announced her support of a state lawsuit over university tuition. Douglas said in a statement that the university system has strayed from the Arizona Constitution when it comes to rising tuition costs. The lawsuit also claims that the Education Board's decision to offer in-state tuition to DACA recipients is an illegal use of public funds. Cronkite News sat down with ASU President Michael Crow to talk about how he plans to protect students who are DACA recipients. He says ASU is doing everything it can to help them be successful. Another plan is to raise money to help them pay their legal fees so that they can be recertified if their certification comes up before Congress takes action. We've done that already. Those dollars are available. Another thing is to work on contingency planning to be able to help them with uh, various uh, tuition models, whatever, they, whatever the court ultimately decides our tuition needs to be. We'll obviously be following the law and, and we'll be like for any other student, we'll be looking for financial aid to help those students to be successful. At least 273 people have died, with another 2,000 people injured after the 7.1 magnitude earthquake that destroyed parts of Mexico City. Search and rescue missions are underway, and rescue dogs are being used to search for survivors in the rubble. A U.S. search and rescue team arrived in Mexico City this morning to join the recovery effort. The team was announced by Secretary of State Rex Tillerson on Wednesday. The president did speak to President Peña Nieto uh, earlier today, he expressed his own deep concerns uh, about the situation, also indicated, though, his uh, immediate deployment of assistance to Mexico City of, of uh, search and rescue expertise. To find out more updates on the earthquake recovery effort, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. President Trump is once again targeting North Korea, this time with an executive order. Today I'm announcing a new executive order I just signed that significantly expands our authorities to target individuals, companies, financial institutions that finance and facilitate trade with North Korea. The executive order would enable the U.S. to sanction individual companies and institutions that finance trade with North Korea. This move comes just days after the president threatened to totally destroy the nuclear power. Africa, Syria, Turkey, and Iraq. Each country has its own language and culture, and students from those countries are all learning English at Central High School. Cronkite News reporter Monica Sampson shows us how this English learning classroom works. Inside Phoenix Central High School is a class that's not so ordinary. That's because Miss Serafin's English as a second language class is filled with refugee students from around the world. Students like Fula El Mubarki. I'm from Iraq and I, I grew up in Syria. Fula says her favorite part of being in America is learning. But her teacher says sometimes when she thinks about what she went through to get to America, she can have a hard time focusing in class. It's a dangerous place for me to live over there. And I can't even go outside because of the war. Miss Serafin says she's aware of the emotional toll surviving in war torn countries can take on her students. It takes a long time. It takes a long time. So. There, it's a very emotional experience, and I feel honored to be a part of her life. In ESL classrooms like this one, students use tools like dictionaries in order to help them understand how to say their name and their address in English. This week's lesson? Let's take out America the Beautiful first. We'll go over our poem. Okay. Learning America the Beautiful. And there's one person full of wishes she could teach it to. I just wa wish just one wish said like that's my old brother to come here. If my dad dream 
can't, he can't, he couldn't make it. I just hope my brother, he can make it and come here. So when it comes to reciting the song's lyrics, Fola says it makes her think one thing. I say thank God because I have the freedom here and I have the, like, I'm in the right place. I have a future here. In Phoenix, Monica Sampson, Cronkite News. In early July, the 1 in 10 Youth Center was severely damaged in a fire. Phoenix police suspect the cause of the fire to be arson. Thanks to community donations, 1 in 10 has opened a new facility in downtown Phoenix. Attendees at 1 in 10's unveiling of their new LGBTQ Youth Center celebrated yesterday, but many still couldn't shake the memory of losing their original home. The new center is 50% larger and is right off of the light rail. It features a kitchen, music room, and gaming center. However, many 1 in 10 youth and staff still hold on to the memories made in the original center. I was sad, heartbroken, because a lot of my memories are in that center, and it felt like they were all taken away, and so I was heartbroken for a while, but now I'm happy that we got this new space, the new center, and it's amazing. You lost your home. I had stuff in there that I cannot replace, um, and I'm just happy that now we have a chance to rebuild and that the community stood up and was like, okay, we're helping. We want these young people who have overcome these great barriers. They're resilient. We want them to be successful. So this center is important for the future of this community. Many World War II veterans have never had the chance to visit the memorial honoring them in the nation's capital. However, a few Arizona veterans received the opportunity to change that. Let's turn to Bailey Vogt from our Cronkite Bureau in Washington, D.C. for the story. Almost 75 years after the end of World War II, Arizona resident Arlie Matthews looked upon his memorial in Washington for the first time. I, I, I don't know. I can't express my I can't express my feelings. It's it's good to see they remember us. <laughs> Matthews was joined by more than 20 World War II veterans from Arizona on an honor flight to Washington. Like Matthews, many of them were experiencing the World War II Memorial for the first time, including Pat Carbine from Scottsdale. Well, this was my first time and I thought it was a wonderful experience. I'm glad we came, yes. And my son came with me, which made it extra special. The trip was provided by Honor Flight Arizona, which honors veterans with a trip to see Washington, D.C. Karen Friddle, a coordinator of the trip, was excited that this group was made up entirely of World War II veterans. As everyone knows, we're running out of our World War II veterans, so it's a really special thing when we can bring a whole plane of World War II veterans with us. Carbine said that the memorial gave her a great reflective experience on serving her country in the past and possibly present. At the time, I was young and I was glad to do it. I might even do it again, except I'm not young anymore. From Washington, Bailey Vote, Cronkite News. Thousands of Arizonans come down with valley fever every year. But relief could soon be in sight. Coming up on Cronkite News, how the University of Arizona is using a multi-million dollar grant to create a vaccine. And some Native American tribes are dabbling in the cannabis industry. How and why this could help their communities. Next. When a story comes in in the morning, we're out the door as fast as we can go. But it's also great to spend more time in communities and produce projects. From the borderlands to the cities, the reservations, and even the state capital, we want to get to the heart of the matter. When the lights come on in the studio, we know our hard work is about to pay off. We love what we do here at Cronkite News. We're proud to tell the stories of our state. Now more than ever, it's important to have a trusted news source, and that's Cronkite News. Native American communities are looking into other revenue opportunities besides gaming. Reporter Emily Richardson was at the National Indian Gaming Association's Mid-Year Expo, where the idea of getting into the cannabis business was addressed. 
Today in downtown Phoenix, Native Americans from across the nation came together to discuss ways to help their communities. One item discussed, whether the cannabis business could potentially help tribes' economies. Everything that you've read about this industry has been wrong. Now that marijuana in some form is legal in 29 states and the District of Columbia, tribal communities are considering expanding their business into cannabis. Two already have. This afternoon in Phoenix, Chairman Bill Sterud of the Peelup Tribe and David Villapondo of the Pay Nation discussed how cannabis is helping their communities. Sterud's tribe is in Washington and they sell medical and recreational marijuana to tribal and non-tribal citizens. He says that even though there have been revenue benefits for his tribe, he believes that the most important important part of cannabis is its medical use. The revenue is good. The medicinal powers of cannabis can't be underestimated. It's been nothing but good in my mind. It's medicine and you, you got to give your people medicine if they need it. On the other hand, Villa Pondo's tribe in Southern California is only interested in being involved with medical marijuana. Uh, San Isabel is a very conservative general membership, uh, and while the general membership recognizes the medical efficacy of cannabis products, um, they are not in favor of recreational. Both men agree that the cannabis industry can provide good opportunities for tribal communities. The buzz around tribal marijuana started in December of 2014, when the federal government announced it would permit American Indian communities to grow and sell cannabis. In Arizona, there are 22 federally recognized tribes. In 2011, the Arizona Department of Health Services published a report where they said tribal leaders and representatives in attendance of their medical marijuana tribal consultation expressed unified opposition to the medical marijuana law. Since then, none have said if they are planning on venturing into the cannabis industry. However, according to Villa Pondo, as the nation begins to be more supportive of marijuana, tribal communities will most likely follow behind. Well, I think in general in society, tribes are a reflection of uh, society's norms. Uh, and the pendulum is swinging towards acceptance. Marijuana still isn't legal federally, so tribal marijuana is dependent on state laws. In Phoenix, Emily Richardson, Cronkite News. Valley fever is a well-known disease in Arizona that can affect the organs, tissue, and respiratory system of humans and animals. There's currently no way to prevent it or cure valley fever. I went to Tucson to learn what the U of A Valley Fever Center for Excellence is doing to fight this disease. Respiratory problems, fatigue, joint aches and pain, those are all symptoms of a disease called valley fever. It's a uh, fungus which uh, when things get dry, um, small single cells of the fungus float off into the air and if you inhale one of those spores, that's how an infection starts. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Arizona had more than 7,000 reported cases of valley fever in 2015. Now that's compared to the 11,000 that reported in the U.S. That's more than 50% of valley fever cases just here in Arizona. The University of Arizona's Valley Fever Center for Excellence received a $4.8 million grant last month from the National Institutes of Health to manufacture a live vaccine that protects dogs from valley fever. Camille Kirshner's dog passed away from valley fever, and she hopes this vaccine is successful. If you can prevent it from happening, then that's a good thing, because, you know, sometimes it can be really expensive. And depending on the size of the dog, treatment can cost 25 to several hundred dollars a month. Making the vaccine available for dogs is tactically a really good idea. They need it, and we could help them. And if we were to show that the vaccine was safe and effective in dogs, it would make the case that much stronger to then take on a vaccine for humans. Dr. Galgiani says approval from the FDA for a live vaccine is challenging. Because it's such a small um, problem relative to a worldwide problem, I think the FDA would be very slow to agree to licensing for humans. Dr. Galgiani's goal is to get the vaccine to market in the next four to five years to help dogs and then to create a vaccine for humans as well. In 2013, Tucson launched a project to revitalize the Santa Cruz River, and the results showed major impacts. Coming up on Cronkite News, how the River Cleanup Project is bringing more than fresh water to surrounding communities. And more on Hurricane Maria and your full seven-day forecast coming up next. The annual Walt 
Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon, held Thursday, October 19th at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring award-winning co-anchors and co-managing editors of the PBS NewsHour, Judy Woodruff, and the late Gwen Eiffel. To learn more or to purchase tickets, call 602-496-0482 or visit cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. This fall. I'm so excited. What? <laughs> from the inspiring to the amazing. We're in the presence of history. The compelling. He said, welcome home. It was just a powerful moment. To the astounding. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> and from the breathtaking. This is real. A journey to Mars. To the electrifying. We're going to change the world. All this and more. All this fall. What started out as upgrading two water treatment plants in the southern part of our state is now also engaging in the community with the outdoors. Cronkite News reporter Courtney Malley went to Tucson to get a first-hand look, look at how they've done it. Courtney? The Living River Project is an annual water quality report put together by the Sonoran Institute. However, this annual report has done more than just bring new plants and new fish to the area. I went down to Tucson to see the difference a few years can make. It's been supporting people for the last 12,000 years. Running through southern Arizona, the Santa Cruz River has seen many environmental changes through the years. The latest, after a series of upgrades in wastewater treatment started in 2013. The impact of clean water goes beyond the riverbank. Students in the community visit the river and learn about the environment around them. Those visits turning into colorful yeah, art projects. Okay. Maria Jenis, a biology teacher at Tucson High, takes her class on field trips to the Santa Cruz River. It's a really wonderful project because water is so much a part of biology. And so it allows me to begin the year talking about the importance of water and weave it through everything that we do and then actually go and see a living river. I think the students surprise themselves. Civil engineer Evan Camfield has been with this project since its inception. The treatment plants were the biggest infrastructure projects that Pima County had ever done, $660 million. The Living River was a way to tell the story of, so what was the effect on the ecosystem and the benefits to the community. We're not the only ones who have turned you know, a liability to an amenity. And although there have been many improvements in the terms of water quality, there are residents in the area that say even more needs to be done. I have noticed that the um, odors from this particular area have been worse than normal. I think a lot more muddy days than clear lately. And while more improvements are always welcome, Claire Zugmeyer, who's been tracking the progress of the Santa Cruz River for the last five years, says they're well on their way. The improvements have been really great for the environment, but also really good just for people in recreating or living in the area prior to the upgrades. We're really tracking and communicating river health so people understand the value of this upgrade. The Santa Cruz is the reason we can call Tucson home. The Sonoran Institute is going to continue to follow the status of the river throughout the coming year. And you can see the art of the students on a link on the Pima County homepage. Courtney Malley in downtown Phoenix, Cronkite News. The first day of fall is tomorrow and with it comes some cooler temperatures for the valley. Holly Bach is live in the weather center with your weekend forecast. And we will get back to those cool fall temperatures. However, Hurricane Maria is continuing to blow very strong as a Category 5 storm now. It's at wind speeds around 120 miles per hour, leaving people without food and power. However, back here in the state of Arizona, we saw a high today of 99 degrees, sunny skies, and humidity around 42%. Going into the state of Arizona, we can see temperatures Grand Canyon at 70 degrees, Sholo at 73, and Tucson a little bit warmer at 75 degrees. Now, our valley is pretty warm still right now. We have temperatures at 94 in Scottsdale, 95 in Chandler, and Maricopa at 99 degrees. Now, tomorrow is the first day of fall, and we are going to see these fall-like temperatures. So our high for tomorrow is 89 degrees, nice and warm. Going into the weekend, we are going to be in the 80s as well. However, going into the week, these temperatures are going to escalate back up. Thursday, we're going to be at 96 degrees. However, the lows here are in the 60s and 70s, so we will see those chilly and cool nights. I'm Holly Bach, live from the Weather Center. 
The Phoenix Suns are a hit on the basketball court, but now they're getting kids in the Phoenix community involved. Coming up on Cronkite News, how these basketball players are making a difference in the community next. I'm Bill Moyers. I've been around a long time and I've seen it all. So I can say with a certain authority that public affairs reporting is more important now than ever. It's absolutely crucial for journalism education to continue our legacy of protecting American democracy. Objectivity, fairness, holding the powerful accountable, finding the truth as well as we can. These are the hallmarks of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. Students here are transforming the news industry and honoring the integrity of the school's namesake, the Cronkite School at ASU, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As the Phoenix Suns prepare for the upcoming season, the team continues to be an active force in the community. Cronkite News reporter Andy Krause discovered how the Suns aim to improve the neighborhoods that support them. <laughs> Slippery, ugly, but manageable. Those were some of the words kids use to describe an outdoor basketball court they play on every day in downtown Phoenix. But this is what they think of it now. This is much prettier. Valley kids have been playing on courts like these for decades, but a lot of them are in need of a makeover. In honor of their 50th season here in Phoenix, the Suns are taking it upon themselves to renovate 50 basketball courts throughout the community. And they're starting with the one right here at Neighborhood Ministries. For us to come in here and offer some encouragement and, and build these courts and let these kids know we care about them and that you know they're part of the community and we're right there with them is it's a good feeling sons forwards alan williams and derrick jones jr join team owner robert sarver to show their support for improving the neighborhoods they represent they also gave the kids a helping hand in breaking in their brand new basketball court I think anytime you get a chance to come out with a basketball and play, it's something special. That's why I love the game, because you can come out here by yourself no matter what time it is. Um, as long as you have a light source and, and a hoop and a ball, you can go out and have a, a great time. So I think something like this is really important. The organization feels a responsibility to give back to the community, as Sarver understands that its fortunes are intertwined with the people that support the team. And your future is our future. In downtown Phoenix, Andy Krause, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, an asteroid hunting spacecraft designed in part at ASU makes a flyby of Earth. And a festival in Tempe looks at the future of technology. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. I talk with Melinda Gates about the role of U.S. aid abroad. That's Thursday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Next time on the Vietnam War, casualties mount as U.S. Marines dig in at Con Tien. We were being called the Alamo. You know, hey, we knew what the Alamo was. And the Battle of Doc To takes a staggering toll when the Vietnam War continues.
Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Held Thursday, October 19th at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring award-winning co-anchors and co-managing editors of the PBS NewsHour, Judy Woodruff, and the late Gwen Eiffel. To learn more or to purchase tickets, call 602-496-0482 or visit cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Your favorite PBS shows, ready to watch when you are, anytime, any place. Find more ways to explore than ever before. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. show where we tackle the taboo and debate the tough questions with some of the most interesting minds in the game. I'm Carlos Watson, Electrifying Conversation, Friday, only on PBS. Friday night at 7.30 on Arizona PBS. Next time on Doc Martin. Why are you here? I would have thought that was obvious. Martin begins therapy. How long will this take to fix? This isn't surgery. Al's first guests include an uninvited one. I knew we should have stayed at a proper hotel. Martin's wish comes true. Hello. Louisa. Martin. And the new nanny arrives. Now, which one of you is James Henry? I have patience. Doc Martin. Saturday night at 10 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Hospice of the Valley, medical, social, and spiritual care for patients nearing end of life and support for their families. A not-for-profit community hospice, hov.org. Whitfield Nursery, proud to support Arizona PBS, a valley tradition since 1946. Over 200 acres of Arizona-grown tree, citrus, and palms. Complete custom design and installation, and Whitfield Nursery still does the digging. WhitfieldNursery.com. Next on Arizona Horizon, a spacecraft flyby with a local connection. Also tonight, self-driving cars, virtual reality. What's next? A new festival looks at the future of technology. And in our continuing series, Vietnam, Arizona Stories, we hear from veterans who want a replica of the Vietnam Wall in Arizona. Those stories next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Arizona PBS, members of your PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Janet Napolitano is speaking out about the importance of NAFTA to the U.S. economy. The former Arizona governor was in Washington today for a discussion on the future of NAFTA and the state of U.S.-Mexico relations. I think our countries are uh, generally much stronger uh, when uh, we think of ourselves as an economic region uh, and where we're working to facilitate lawful travel and trade. Uh, and uh, as I said before, the 